Hi, we are in the uh, the newsroom. We've just joined by Lisa. Hello. Sister Been I. watching live Twitter stream. Very excited. And Aid, I think you're joining us for this as well, aren't you? Yeah. If you can shove yeah. on pants. Oh, you can you get the see the little see what it is. Rose between <laughs> two thorns. Oh, is that the saying? I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think that's something about that. So. Um, I think if any of you were following um, earlier, Aid, you were talking before, weren't you, about um, your ambitions for today. But if you, for anybody that wasn't watching on the last stream, what what you've been most happy with with how today's going and, and, and what you've seen so far? Yeah, we've been um, very excited by the amount of stories coming out from tenants and the tenants tweeting um, what they're doing and how proud they are. Um, and the vast majority, of happy, the vast majority of people actually are happy, um, but obviously lots of concerns and questions about the future. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons for doing the housing is to try and collect some of those thoughts together and shape that as we move forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's that's right. Isn't it? We were talking before um, Lisa, before you just arrived, about how even more so housing day and proud tenant at this moment in time when tenants are so fearful yes. and scared about the future has just yeah. come at exactly the right time to give that sense of community and so, and you know we've all been picking up all the tweets from people mm. that would have never got never, involved yeah. before i think it's mobilized people because yeah. i thought i think one of the things we picked up was some fear but you're actually getting more people talking about not just why they're proud to be tenants, but really proud of what they are, what they do in their communities. Yeah. And, and actually people, we've, we've done some work where people have come back. I would never have expected to even put pen to paper, never mind write a tweet. Mm. So, you know, we've got those people that are not on Twitter have given yeah. us examples. Yeah. And it, the, the range from why it's so important to get involved through to why we should scrutinise, to why we should get involved in our community, to why being a tenant matters, mm. to why being allowed to continue to be a tenant in the future so people have articulated the concerns in it why i'm proud yeah. um, and so what's blown me away is just the sheer scale of engagement rather than proud to you know the housing side of it it's yeah. people's experiences right. yeah. and, and ambition as well i think struck me yeah hmm. Absolutely, I think that's right. And I think, but also, you know, I think it's about time we said a you know really huge thank you to all of those tenants that have taken part in it because I think the point was made last week at the Place Shapers Conference about you know we're asking tenants to talk about their life and about their experience, tell us about their kids, about really personal, personal things that have happened yeah. to them, and actually we're not asking the whole sector to do that. We're asking tenants to do that. So yeah. I think we should, you know a really big thank you to tenants for doing that. Um, and sharing that with mm. us because it, it takes some guts and you know I think that's really impressive how much people have done that. Guts. It and does. I think one of the things that struck me this time is that I think people are genuinely a bit fed up of the stigma that comes and this label that comes with being a tenant. Mm. And actually I think that's really encouraged people to say being a tenant's a good thing and, and to share those experiences and we know Jenny that Real stories change hearts and minds, and yeah. people have bought into that. Yeah. Um, but it is hard, and some people have been very brave, you know, in terms of what they've said. Mm. And it does require a thank you because there's not many of us would do that mm. you know, actually yeah. to come out and say at a time when society isn't necessarily that tolerant of the word tenant because that's the so to come out and say why it's good to be a tenant is really brave mm. yeah. and mm. inspiring. Yeah, I think absolutely. it's really good for our staff as well. Yeah, our staff are reading them, and I've heard in the office all day, oh, have you seen that? Wow, have you seen that? So it's created yeah. lots of discussion. Yeah. Um, and staff going, now I'm proud to be a housing association. Yeah. 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 And it's encouraged new conversations. We've been engaged with tenants that we have no dialogue with, yeah. who've come and said, we want to participate. That's just That's brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So any of the kind of tweets that have really spoke to any of you then so far today? I mean, there's been some... I mean, I, I would love... We talked about it earlier. There was one from a six-year-old. Oh. We've had a six-year-old tenant sat in the chair talking about what mm. it is to live in a house. I mean, brilliant. I mean, so we've got to that at this yeah. stage. It's fantastic. Um, right the way up to kind of people in the 90s and probably in the 100s. Yeah, so, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you know, what, what other spectrum. sector is, is showing that showcase of people that are involved? It's the diversity it of is. our tenants, mm. isn't yeah. it? And the richness that... It's not a stereotype. You've mm. got the young teenagers that are wanting to talk, which both that means you've got some older people. I, I think some of the things that struck me is just comments around the importance of four walls and a roof over your head, yeah. talking about choices, security res and responsibilities. Someone said, my house enables me to have responsibilities. And when you read some articles, you hear people say, well, you tenant, you have everything done for you. Um, and things around neighbours and community, that kind of thing that comes with it, they, they've struck me quite a lot. Um, 
We talked at Play Shapers last week about um, frightened. Was the um, hashtag scared tenant? Yeah. And actually, that struck a chord as well. Quite a few people worried that they've built up their homes. A few people saying, "I'm proud of my home. I don't want to lose it." You know, and it's that that must be really concerning for people that they're living with that over yeah. them at the moment as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just flicking through, being hot off the press to the newsroom. I'm now trying to skim through the tweets that have been coming in. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, it, it is just, but I think what's also, I hope, comes out of this today is not only about people sharing their stories about being a proud tenant, which is that, you know, clearly the hashtag, but also people being confident to speak out about the wider issues that are happening in housing. You know, mm -hmm. if what today does is say, yeah, I'm proud tenant, and we go on from that to talk about, but I'm angry about this, or I want to shout about this, or I want to get some confidence to talk to my MP about this. Gosh, that would be a wonderful legacy of today, won't yeah. it? If we get people to speak out more, more than just about yeah. their story. I think that's the other thing important to highlight, that those people who put their head above the parapet and speaking yeah. out, so that we encourage others to do the same, Indeed. and motivate others to do the same, that yeah. bit, of, bit of role modelling, if you like, which, you know, there's no there's no harm in it, there's, you know, you're not going to get shut down for it, yeah. but it should encourage more people to do that. I think it also is, to some extent, for, you know, if you're aware of, um, of wrong misconception, yeah. challenge it. Yeah. You know, we work in social housing and we, mm. you know, we, I think everyone has, you know, somebody has, their lives have been touched by social housing in some way. Mm. And I think actually challenge those misconceptions, don't just sit there and allow it to happen. Yeah. You know, when you see things like these Benefit Britain or whatever yeah. programme, yeah. you should actually feel comfortable standing up and going, no. That's not on and that's not right. Mm. I think you're absolutely right. We have, I have um, a tenant, not from my association, not even from Leeds, but even the North, in fact, she's a tenant from London, regularly tweets me mm. saying that it's not my job to give her a voice. Saying, you know what, I totally agree with you, but it's our job to try and do whatever we can to facilitate yeah. you mm. to have the confidence to have a voice. Yeah. And if that's what today has done, and that's moved that forward, it's about what we can do to capitalise on that. Because yeah. I mean, they're just great, you know, the stories in here, you know, so proud of Paul, despite health issues and bereavements, he's passed his IT qualifications, and an amazing photo of someone that absolutely wouldn't have put their head above the parapet. Mm. You know, and I think the other thing for me, it's not the typical tenants, and I don't mean that in any yeah. derogatory way, because yeah. people say, well, it's bound to be your tenant board member, it's bound to be. These are just general people that live in properties next to each other, wanting to lead quiet lives, are quite happy to say. Um, I think it's important to, to do that. I think what's been lovely is some of the stories about how people have come into social housing in the first place. You know, they saw one earlier about there was a gas explosion 27 years ago and then she moved into social housing and yeah. she's still there now. And, and again, I think it just it cuts through mm -hmm. some of that lazy journalism that's out there that says... Here, I can tell you, everybody that lives in social housing is like yeah. this, and they've come into it because of this. Yeah. I think, you know, what we're doing today is cutting through this. There is no one story no. here. There is no one reason why people live in social housing. And actually, it's lazy to think yeah. that it is. And I think that's been wonderful that people have, yeah. have shared those. How did I come to be in social housing? I think what Tom Murth is doing in terms of going around all these his old homes. Yeah. He's wonderful about yeah. showing, you know, at different <coughs> points in people's lives why being in social housing has helped them at that point in their life. Yeah. I think wearing the, the shout umbrella on this one, it's, it also for me provides an unequivocal, I can't speak, unequivocal case why social housing is needed. Because this isn't, I mean there was a, a beautiful story before of a couple um, who had, were migrants 50 years ago, or well, 50 years next year, yeah. and they came here as a migrant and were rehoused, and then they've done the story behind how much they've added into their community and how having that home was key to that. Mm. How more relevant is that today yeah, as it was then? And actually, they've lived there, they're a proud tenant. They would not have been able to have achieved anything they would have been able to achieve without that home. Mm. So I think what also we've got here is the start of things to go back and challenge some of those. You know, when we see something on social media or an article in certain papers that we go back and go, this is not what we're seeing. Have you seen Mrs. So and so? Have you seen this? I think you made the point earlier, didn't you, Caroline, about the article that I think a few of us have retweeted from The Guardian this morning. Yeah, I mean, it's just such a low number, you know, um, of people, you know, the migrants that are being housed. And again, yeah. we have got to start saying yeah. that louder to people. You, you know, the, the opinions that your people are saying are not true. And I think yeah. that article you referred to earlier, didn't you? I think it's yeah. just yeah. absolutely it's brilliant, critical right? today. Mm. 
And then you see other things, you know, and I think we have to do a big shout out for landlords because they've got behind it, yeah. you know, and actually they're using different narrative this year. They're proud of their tenants, mm. they're proud of the work mm. they're doing. Mm. You know, you see Curo Group here doing work on neighbourhoods and involving young people in decision making and you just flick down, they keep coming up. Yeah. You know, pr proud tenant, now where's this one, BHP, so that's Brent Housing who's authors of the estate, a picture of young people. You take that picture and if you use that in any other article, you could be quite judgmental about it. Mm -hmm. But in here, what a positive group of young teenagers doing things. So it's, it's well, I, I'm always, I get very inspired by these yeah. kinds of things. I think, I mean, I would say that reading back some of the tenant stories I've mm -hmm. seen from Yorkshire um, Housing, that they do motivate you, they do make you realise <laughs> why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, and no. Um, very much reinforced of the values and motives of where, where we are. Yeah. And also from a housing day perspective, when I did the first one, we did the first one two years ago, there was obviously a lot of staff tweets, a lot of um, crowd to work for organisations mm -hmm. and people saying, where are the tenants? Well, hopefully today, two years later, after last year, that we've progressed a little bit further to have a little bit more tenants and tenant involvement and tenant yeah. engaged mm -hmm. and showing tenants that they can participate in events such mm -hmm. as this. And that's important for Jenny and I, with the tea pass heart, obviously, mm. Jenny really champions it, but it's about saying tenant involvement can be so much more. Mm. Giving your opinion, having a view on something, being confident to challenge, to speak to your MP, to be able just to talk to your housing provider, it's all a form of involvement. Yeah. And it's actually really important. Yeah. And thinking of it from a landlord point of view, knowing what your tenants are thinking and feeling is really important in terms mm. of shaping what you do going forward. It's it's like insight that you can't pay for. Yeah. You know, it's really invaluable. I look in at this thinking, oh yeah, what about what about and the ideas are my poor staff are going, oh you know, she's off in creative <laughs> mode. But it inspires you and it reminds you why we do what we do. Yeah, we do. It's really good. Yeah, and I think it was I think every organisation, every housing association certainly that I speak to the cons people, are absolutely keen on having more people involved and we want that yeah. feedback and we want to know. Mm. So, you know, if you are a tenant and you are watching, get involved, you know, mm. get in touch with us, you know, get in touch with mm. your housing association, there are resident boards, mm. yeah. you know, there are panels about all sorts of things and we would love you to be there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, well, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Just keep tweeting. And thank you again to our sponsor Lewisham Homes on Muskman. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.